I'd like for you to take God's word with me this evening and turn to the Old Testament book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 103, Psalm 103. It's a beautiful psalm, a psalm of David. Let's read it together, beginning in verse number one and reading down to verse 22. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all, for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind pass, passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. This is an amazing little psalm. It's a psalm really of praise and devotion. I want you to look at Psalm, the 13th verse of this chapter. And this is where I want to begin. We'll look at most of the chapter tonight. But the 13th verse says, Like as a father pitieth his children. So the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Father's Day brings a whole mixture of emotions, doesn't it? Some may be here tonight or watching tonight that do not have good memories of their childhood and of their fathers. But I want to speak about our Heavenly Father tonight. In fact, it is true that if you have had a good father, and if you've had a godly father, it is only because we have a good God. Because every good and perfect gift cometh from above. And we realize that God himself is that fountain from which all goodness flows. So really, he alone is worthy of praise. But there's an interesting little train of thought found in this psalm. Now, David is, is really, he's just, he is away all by himself. His mind is just thinking about the goodness of God the Father. He is not really talking with anyone. He's communing with his own heart. He's thinking about how good God is. And that's why he says, bless the Lord, O my soul. This psalm begins with that phrase and it ends with it. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And by the way, that's the natural expression of a heart that is overwhelmed by the goodness of God. And if you would ever get a glimpse of just who God really is, you would do the same thing as David. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 
And it's interesting, he says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Because it's from the soul, from the depths within, that we should praise and magnify and bless his name. Who is it that David is speaking so highly of? It's the Lord. It's his God. And it's with his whole heart, with his soul. Can I just say any outward act of religion or worship that is not motivated by a sincere love for God is nothing more than a performance. Any act outwardly, if it is not coming from the depths of your soul, it's just really a, a performance. That's why David says, bless the Lord, O my soul. But one thing that I really like is in the middle of this chapter, right in the middle, David almost sort of breaks in and says, all that I'm speaking about can be for you. As if he's speaking to someone who does not yet know, who does not yet, has not yet experienced what he is proclaiming. And I can imagine this evening, there are some here tonight who know that God is good with your head and you believe that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You believe all that is written, but you do not know him yet as your father. You do not know Christ as your savior. You have not tasted and seen that he is good. Perhaps from a distance you can see the goodness of God, but you have no peace in your own heart and soul that you belong to him. You cannot say by the spirit of God, Abba, Father. You haven't been set free to say that yet. Well, I believe that this psalm is for you. Look what he says in verse number 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Can I just say tonight that God hasn't given us what we deserve? He hasn't. And the fact that we're still alive and breathing, and tonight if, if you are still lacking peace with God and not sure of where you stand with him yet, he, has, he is showing you mercy tonight. Because you're still alive. He hasn't yet dealt with you according to your iniquities. And he goes on to explain this. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. He goes on to say that there is mercy, that even more mercy that you, than what you've experienced and are experiencing right now. There's more for you if you would fear him. It continues. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our, those who fear him, our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. And here's what I believe David is saying. He is saying this, if tonight by God's grace and God's mercy, you are caused to look up to heaven with a heart and a mind that says, oh God, I know that I'm a sinner and I know that I'm going to stand before you one day, and I'm frightened of that day because I do not feel ready, then I believe God looks down in mercy and pities you. Now let's go back to verse number one. I want to speak a little bit about this God because sometimes we get, a, we get the wrong idea of who God is. And David says, I, want, I need to remind myself of who he is. And would you look this way for a moment? One, one area that we often neglect is reminding ourselves of how great he is. We sometimes sing it, and I, I can remember the last time we had the evening of praise together and singing hymns, and Rebecca requested to sing that hymn, How Great Thou Art, and we could just sense the Lord was with us when we were remembering how great he is. And that's what David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not... You know, we oftentimes begin to wobble when we forget. When we forget his benefits. I know, I know a believer is wobbling when they speak more of their troubles than they do of their Savior. I know a believer has begun to get off track when they speak about how hard things are and and how it's all coming on top of them. 
when they speak more of that because they've forgotten how good, even if more trouble was given to you, still God is good. And so David says, forget not all his benefits. Don't forget all that God has done for you. Don't forget all that who God is. And he begins to list, and we have really three alls in a row. Forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. And he begins there. And by the way, he begins with three things. It's really, it looks like God's cleaning up a mess. And really, before, you, before we get into all the good things that God has given, we remember what God had to do before he could give us what we deem to be great blessings. And look at the very first thing on David's list. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. The first thing that David says, don't you forget. When the waves get high and you begin to feel as if you're, 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 you're sinking beneath all the difficulties, don't you forget that he's forgiven all your iniquities. All of them. He's forgiven all of your sins. In fact, it says, and again, we, uh, I read it to you in verse number 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. He hath not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Don't you forget that you did not get what you deserve. And he's forget not only that, but he's forgiven them all. The best cure for a grumbling heart is to Remember, he's forgiven you of all your iniquities. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten what Christ died to save you from? Have you forgotten all the iniquities that he forgave you? And by the way, forget not that he forgiveth all thine iniquities in the past. And let's not forget about all the iniquities that we keep stumbling into. He's still forgiving Quite remarkable. The next thing he says, who healeth all thy diseases. This is an amazing little expression because we understand that the corruption of human nature is really found in the sickness of the soul. And because the soul is sick, everything else is sick. The body is therefore sick as well. And sometimes we notice it more in somebody else who has an outward disease like cancer or something like that, which is very obvious. But the truth is, we are all born with a sick body. Did you know that? You may not have cancer, you may not have uh, some other disease, some chromosomal disorder, but we still have a sick body. Sneezes and coughs and all sorts of things. Our evidence is that the body isn't what it should be. Hair falling out, weight gain in all sorts of places. And we know that we are living in a sick shell, which is an outward indication of an inward problem, a sick soul. And so when Christ died on the cross, he didn't just uh, heal all of our outward diseases. He dealt first with the inward disease of sin. Amen. And we trust that ultimately it will be revealed that we have indeed been healed from even those physical things when we will be granted that glorified body. We praise God. He healeth all thy diseases. When sin is dealt with, the disease is healed, and we are given eternal life. We are born into a world dying physically, and when we meet Jesus Christ and are born again, we are now living eternally. Christ has broken that curse. In Christ, we are healed. It goes on. He forgiveth all thine iniquities, he healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Literally, rescued us, from the second death, because that's where we were headed. Not that the first death isn't the problem. The second death is the problem. And he redeemed us, bought us back out of that, rescued us from that direction of headed to the second death. Rescued. And so you ought to be able to sit up straight and rejoice that he's redeemed you, rescued you. You have nothing to fear any longer. Iniquity is forgiven, disease is healed, redeemed from destruction. And I think, that sounds more like a rescue mission to me. And then David begins to talk about all the beautiful things. You see, God had to first get you out of that mess 
get you out of the mire before we can start cleaning you up. There's no good spraying perfume on somebody who hadn't had a shower. So get a shower first and then put the perfume on. We know young fellows, oftentimes young people have that little habit. They think that by spraying perfume on themselves without bathing, it takes care of the problem. It doesn't. Just to give you some advice, young people, it doesn't. And so the soul must be cleansed, must be washed, and then God begins to bestow upon you. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. And look what he says. He now goes into these beautiful things that he gives us, who crowneth thee with loving kindness. Can you imagine him rescuing you out of the pit, the mire? And then he puts a crown on your head, but it's not a crown of gold. It's a crown of loving kindness. Here's what it is. It's a symbol of his favor and grace upon your life. How amazing. I don't deserve a crown. I deserve a cross. But he gave me a crown of loving kindness, of grace and favor, and a crown of tender mercy. He gave you his grace, and he gave you his mercy. And he crowned you with it so it would be evident to all who would see. Isn't that marvelous? He goes on. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. I think it's amazing. My whole life I thought that I was getting good things from the world. I thought it tasted good. And the truth of the matter is it was rotting my teeth and my insides and rotting my soul. And when I met the Savior, I found out what was really good. And those things which once I was looking to to fill my soul, to fill the longing within, I now have a disgust for them. I no longer want them. He satisfies my mouth. Nothing in this world can ever satisfy your soul with good things. Look what he says. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I'm told that eagles are long-lived birds. And I'm told that every year... They look pretty haggard, and uh, by the end of the year, they start to molt, and they look like they look pretty bad. <laughs> Give it some time, and the new feathers push out the old, and they look like a brand new bird every single year. Isn't it amazing that our strength can be renewed? Although this outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. And this is the promise that we have of walking with God himself. And the scriptures go on to speak about all of these things that are found in him. He then tells us in verse number six, the Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. And maybe tonight you're listening to this wonderful account of a good God a God who forgives sins, a God who heals diseases, a God who redeems life from destruction. Maybe tonight you're thinking, I, lo I long for that. I want that myself. Can I tell you in verse number eight, just directly from David's mouth, the Lord is merciful and he's gracious. This is from, from God's account himself. God is merciful and gracious and slow to anger. I've always had a bit of a quick temper. Some people have that more than others. And we think sometimes that God is like us, but the Bible says he's slow to anger. I know that to be true because I've done plenty to upset my heavenly father, but he's slow to anger. And he's plenteous in mercy. And tonight, if you're longing to know this God, then, then read this passage and see and hear the heart of God. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. Every once in a while, the Lord, our, our Heavenly Father gets on to us, but he doesn't deal with us after our sins. Never has, or else we'd be, we wouldn't be here today. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Would you look this way? Tonight, if you've never been born again, if you do not repent of your sins and come to him, soon he will deal with you according to your iniquities. Right now he hasn't. And you might think that everything's okay because God, hey, God hasn't punished me yet. God hasn't dealt with me yet. No, no, that's just an act of his mercy. 
But soon and very soon, if you do not repent of your sins and turn to this merciful, gracious God, he will deal with you according to your iniquities. But so far he hasn't. But there's no guarantee that tomorrow he won't. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Do you know what the key is to obtaining mercy from God? Well, we know it's his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That always begins with a fear, a proper fear of God. When you begin to realize that all of your sin is not against the police officer, not against the government, not against your wife who you've been unkind to, or your husband who you've you know, perhaps been nagging at. All of your sin is not against a person. All of your sin is against God. And very soon, if you do not make amends with that God, then we will be dealt with according to our iniquities. But his mercy is great towards them that fear him. God is longing tonight to show mercy to the ones who know that God is good and know that God is just and know that they will meet God soon. God longs tonight to show you mercy, even more mercy than you have right now. Even more mercy than you have by the fact that you're still alive and he hasn't dealt with you. And here's what the scriptures say he is longing and ready to do. He will separate your sins as far as the east is from the west. So far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Do you know for every person that leans and throws themselves upon Christ, who in, in mercy and humility uh, falls at the feet of Christ, recognizing that only Jesus can save them, only Christ can redeem them. Every person who does it, the Bible says God takes your sins from off of your back. They've already been placed on the Lord Jesus, and they are removed from you as far as the east is from the west. How far is the east from the west? They never truly touch. Never truly meet. It's interesting. Somebody told me one time there's only really three people that will remind you of your sin. If you've been born again, there are really only three people that will bring up your past. The devil, yourself, and maybe some of your old friends. But God will never bring it up. Because he's removed it as far as the east is from the west, and he's chosen to remember it no more. Chosen to remember your sins no more. And then verse 13 says, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Do you know we have a good father in heaven? No matter how your father on earth has treated you, our father in heaven is a good father. And he looks down in pity this evening and longs to bring you in beneath his wings if you fear him if tonight you tremble knowing that your sin has condemned you knowing that if you got what you deserve tonight you'd be separated from god for all eternity in hell if you feel that and sense that and know that your only hope is christ then the scriptures say like a father pitieth his children so the lord pitieth them that fear him but that pity that mercy is reserved only for those that fear him. That pity and that love and that mercy is only given to those who are humble enough to acknowledge that they've sinned against this good God, sinned against his goodness, sinned against his grace and mercy, spat at the face of his mercy, trampled it beneath their feet. Only those tonight who realize, oh, I'm in trouble. And I love what it says in verse 14. He knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. Do you know God knows you? He knows how weak we are. He knows that we're not able. For as, as for man, his days are as a grass, as a flower of the field. So he flourisheth, for the wind passeth over, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. Look, we all know that life is short. And David testifies right now that your life is like grass. It's up. And then gone. Today some friends drove to uh, speak with me this afternoon about the Lord. And they came for quite some, uh, drove quite a distance from London, north of London. And they came this afternoon. And as they came at the back of their car, there uh, was a little sticker that said, 
R.I.P. and then the name of a loved one that had died. And I asked them about it and they said, it was a loved one who was in his 20s that passed away this past year. And we're reminded constantly of how brief life is. It's, it's very quick, isn't it? And so I encourage you tonight, instead of wasting more time on yourself and wasting more time foolishly and prodigally, why don't you turn from your sins this evening? So very soon the wind may pass over your life and it shall be gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. You might be nothing more than a, a bumper sticker that says rest in peace. Or the Bible says in verse 17, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. You see, that is a pattern upon them that fear him, upon them that fear him, upon them that fear him. Tonight, do you fear God? If you do, that's a gift. God in his mercy has given you that, that you might understand that there's somebody greater than you that you are accountable to. That's a gift from God. And let that be a token in your own heart and mind that God has begun a good work in you. Let that be a token that there is hope. I'm not worried about the one tonight who's, who's concerned about their soul and nervously, anxiously worrying about whether or not God will be mercy to them, merciful to them. I'm worried about the one who can sit with their relaxed and chilled, smacking their chewing gum like it's no big deal. Because the, what we find is to them that fear the Lord, to them that fear God, that is, that is where the mercy is given and granted. That is to whom mercy is given. Upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Think about that. His kingdom ruleth over all. Over this government, over this nation, over all nations, his kingdom ruleth over all. And then David wraps it up. Therefore, based upon all that we've talked about, bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, all of his armies, all of his creation, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works and all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He goes from wide right down to personal. All the angels bless him and my soul. Let my soul be numbered amongst those that bless him for his mercy and for his grace this evening. Perhaps your memory of, of a father isn't a good one, but let me tell you, we have a good father in heaven tonight who stands with open arms to all those who fear him, to all those who recognize the only pathway into his arms is a pathway called Jesus Christ. But it is a very, it is a, is a pathway that is, that is easy. You say, what do you mean it's easy? Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. Because it's not about what you do, it's about what he has done. It's about trusting in his grace and trusting in his mercy. He will then take you by the hand and help you walk the rest of the way. Don't make it more difficult than it is. Speaking with a young man this, this morning after the meeting this afternoon and speaking to me about all those many things in his life that are keeping him from Christ. Many addictions, many problems. And I said to him, look, you just come just... You just come the way you are. Christ will deal with that. If you try to sort those things out before you come to Christ, you'll never come. Come and let him deal with them. Let him break one chain at a time. Let him set you free one addiction at a time. Perhaps he'll do it all in one big swoop, but you let him do that. I wonder tonight, do you fear him? Do you recognize it? Your iniquities are taking you on a one-way one ticket to hell. Do you recognize that? But do you also recognize the benefits and blessings of God? The one who forgives all of those iniquities. The one who heals all thy diseases. Who is willing to redeem your life from that destruction. If you would fear him, then mercy turn to him. I was speaking with Jeremy yesterday and he was telling me, hanging, I mentioned it today at the, at the river at the baptism. He, was, he hung his head in shame when we were walking yesterday. He said, I'm, just, I'm ashamed of how I used to speak of Christians. 
uh, an, uh, an aggressive atheist for years. I'm ashamed of how I spoke of Christians, ashamed of how I spoke of Christ. When I first started coming to the chapel, he said, I felt like a hypocrite. I felt like a, I didn't belong there because I was too bad and, and all of you were too good. And I said, but then you realize that we're all bad. We just have a good Savior. And the only difference between us and you at the time was that our sins had been forgiven. And he smiled, a big smile came upon his, fa his face and he nodded his head and he said, yes. Yes. I wonder tonight if, if perhaps you are feeling like Jeremy once felt. <clears throat> perhaps you're feeling tonight that you don't really belong and you want to belong, but you feel as if you don't. I'm telling you, your only hope is in Christ. Your only hope is in the goodness of God the Father. We often forget that it was the goodness and grace of God the Father that sent the Lord Jesus Christ in great love to die on the cross for our sins. And it's the goodness and love of the Holy Spirit that draws a sinner like you and I to the side of Christ, to his bleeding side, to see what Christ has done for us. Would you come to him this evening? Tonight I'm telling you, like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Look unto Christ. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And perhaps tonight you might be able to say like David, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank thee. We bless thee for all thy benefits. We thank thee, Lord, that thou hast forgiven us of all our iniquities, healed us from all our diseases, redeemed us from destruction, and crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. We thank thee, Lord, that our mouth has been satisfied with good things so that our youth shall be restored as the eagles. We thank thee for all that is found in Christ. And I pray that tonight somebody else may see the goodness of our great God. Someone else tonight might recognize that their sins have indeed been removed from them as far as the east is from the west. Help them to turn unto thee even this evening. For we ask it in Christ Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.